Welcome back everyone to Crash Course Apologetics. So we are discussing the argument put forward by Dr. Michael Rhoda in his recent book, Taking Pascal's Wager, Faith, Evidence, and the Abundant Life. I've put the link in the description, go check it out now. I mentioned last time that in order to better appreciate the nature of the pragmatic argument that Rhoda puts forward, he spends chapter one going over the basics of decision theory. That's what we'll discuss in this video. Decision theory is essentially about how to make good decisions in circumstances of risk or uncertainty. And this theory can be applied to mundane tasks like whether to take a bus or whether to take a taxi. It can also apply to really significant choices like what career you will pursue. Three concepts are absolutely foundational. States, strategies, and outcomes. A state is a possible way things might be. A strategy is a possible action the decider might take. And an outcome is the resulting situation when taking a strategy and a certain state is actual. Now decision theory offers two principles to guide you when taking risks. First, try to maximize your expected value. And second, pick a strongly dominant strategy if possible. If not, try to pick a weakly dominant strategy. Now, that's a lot of new vocab words, so what does any of this even mean? Well, stick with me. It's actually pretty common sense once you break it down and give some examples. Suppose I offer you a bet. We ask a trusted friend to flip a fair coin, but not tell us whether it came up heads or tails. Then I ask you to decide whether to play or pass. If you choose to play, it will cost you one dollar. However, if the coin came up heads, you will get your dollar back and I will give you two dollars of my own. If you choose to play and the coin comes up tails, I will keep your dollar. If you choose to pass, no money will change hands either way. Would you take my bet? Decision theory says you should. Why? Because of that first principle I mentioned, maximizing your expected value. To see how this works, let's make a decision matrix. Each possible state, heads or tails, is placed in a column, and each possible strategy, play or pass, is placed in a row. The outcomes go in each cell. So in outcome one, you would gain two dollars. In outcome two, you would lose one dollar. In outcomes three and four, you neither gain money nor lose money. So let's calculate the expected value of the strategy play. First, determine the probability of each state. In our case, it's one half since this is a fair coin. Then multiply each by the value of its corresponding outcome. The value of outcome one is two dollars. The value of outcome two is negative one dollar. Then add the products. You find that the expected value of the strategy play is 0.5. That means if you were offered this bet a large number of times and you chose to play every time, you would on average win 50 cents. Now compare that result to the expected value of the strategy pass. You find pretty quickly that the expected value is zero. Since playing has a greater value than passing, you should choose to play. Now in real life, we usually don't have precise numbers or probabilities to assign to states, but there are principles that guide us, like I'll do X cause it can't hurt and it might help, or you should do Y cause there's nothing to lose and a lot to gain. This common sense notion is actually called a weakly dominant strategy in the language of game theory. Here's an example. Say your friend loaned you her bicycle for the day and you need to run in a store on the edge of town real quick. You put the lock around the bike, and as you stick the key in the lock, you think, this part of town seems pretty safe. There's hardly any chance of the bike being stolen, especially since I'll be able to see the bike through the store window. So, should you lock up the bike? Though you can't really assign any precise values in this case, it's clear enough what you should do. Turn your wrist. Why? Map out the situation using a matrix again. If a thief happens by, locking is far better. And if a thief doesn't happen by, locking is no worse than unlocking. 
In this case, locking is a weekly dominant strategy. A weekly dominant strategy yields a better or at least equally good outcome. In decision theory, always pick the weekly dominant strategy. Unless, of course, there's a strongly dominant strategy. A strongly dominant strategy yields a better outcome in every possible state. So we've seen that decision theory is all about how to make good decisions in circumstances of risk or uncertainty. There are three foundational concepts, states, strategies, and outcomes. And there are two guiding principles. Try to maximize your expected value and pick a weakly dominant strategy unless a strongly dominant strategy is available. With this crash course in decision theory behind us, you're now ready to apply these principles to this updated version of Pascal's argument that we'll discuss in the next video. See you then.